for yourself, full satisfaction of your mind and heart. And the real truth is that can only be achieved when you love God. Therefore, first-class religion teaches and trains the candidates how to love God. That is first-class religion. Savai Pungsan Paro Dharamo Yato Bhaktihi. The supreme occupation, or dharma, for all humanity is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendent Lord. Srimad Bhagavatam 126 The great sages who originated every great religion know that this perfect spiritual love is the supreme dharma, the ultimate satisfaction for the mind and heart. That perfect love does not have any motive. In this material world, love is always motivated. I love you, you love me. In the background, there is always some selfish motive. But real spiritual love is inter uninterrupted and without any motive. Ahaituki apratihata. Such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. Srimad Bhagavatam 126. Anya bilasita sunyam, jnana karma jnanavritam, anukul yena krishnanu shilanam bhaktir uttama. One should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord Krishna favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through fruitive activities or philosophical speculation. That is called pure devotional service. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1111. Pure devotional service is performed without desire for material gain or even spiritual liberation. The only desire is for Krishna's satisfaction. That will be talked later on in Bhagavad Gita. In material consciousness, people are working with a motive. Some are working for knowledge, but most are working for sense gratification. Material consciousness means motivated work. Some people are trying to become a big scholar by accumulating knowledge, not for understanding God, but just some superfluous material knowledge. And this is called jnana. And karma means working day and night for sense gratification, like an animal. But bhakti, pure love of Godhead, is transcendental. As we quoted above, anya bilashita shunyam, jnana karma jnavritam, anukul yena krishnanu shildanam bhaktir uttama. One should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord Krishna favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through fruitive activities or philosophical speculation. That is called pure devotional service. So real love of Godhead is not tainted by any combination of jnana and karma because both of these are material. Therefore, our predecessor teacher Nartam Das Thakur has written, Jnana Kanda, Karma Kanda, Shakali Vishera Banda. In the material consciousness, either you are engaged in the activities of speculative knowledge or acquiring sense gratification. Either Jnana Kanda or Karma Kanda. So Nartam Das Thakur says that both the Jnana Kanda and Karma Kanda are pots of poison. If you drink from either one, it doesn't matter. It will kill your spiritual life. By working according to Karma Kanda, one may get a little sense gratification, a nice house, money, good family life. But according to accumulated karma, you'll have to take another material body. By working according to Jnana Kanda, you may get a nice body in a Brahmana family, a very educated family or a rich family. But you'll still have to go through the transmigration of the soul, repetition of birth and death in the material world. And there is a great risk, because you do not know what kind of body you're going to get in the next life. There's no guarantee, because the laws of karma and rebirth are very complex. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Karmana daiva netrena jantur deho papatatye striya pravista udaram pungso reta kanashraya. The Personality of Godhead said, Under the supervision of the Supreme Lord and according to the result of his work, 
the living entity, the soul, is made to enter into the womb of a woman through the particle of male semen to assume a particular type of body. Srimad Bhagavatam 3.31.1 Yang yang vapi smaran bhavam tyajitante kalevaram tang tam me vaiti konteya sadatad bhava bhavitaha Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, O son of Kunti, that state he will attain without fail. Bhagavad Gita 8.6 So because the laws of nature are so perfect and based on the law of karma, at the time of your death, according to your mental condition, you will get a similar body in the next life. Because Krishna is within your heart as the super soul, Krishna can see how you are thinking, what is the quality of your mental conception, and immediately gives you an appropriate vehicle for that conception. So you take the body that embodies your state of consciousness at the time of death. So if you are thinking of Krishna, you will take your original spiritual body, Janma karma chame divyam evam yo veti tattvataha. Tyaktva dehang punar janma. Naiti ma meti sorjuna. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Bhagavad Gita 4 9. This is Krishna consciousness. How to train the mind to die thinking of Krishna. Then your life is successful. Therefore, we chant Krishna's holy name, serve him, and always think of Krishna. Man mana bhava mad bhakto, madhyaji mang namaskuru, ma me vaishyasi satyante pratijane priyosime. Always think of me, become my devotee. Worship me and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. Bhagavad Gita, 1865. Then your life is perfect. So this is the aim of the esoteric teaching. Because we go through life mostly thinking of the objects of the material senses. Therefore, at the time of death, when the mind is unrolled, all these impressions of material sense objects come out and pass before one's consciousness. And uh, this is called uh, seeing one's life before one's eyes in a flash at the time of death. And this is a fact. Anyone who has near-death experience can tell you. The experiences of the whole life flash before your mind's eye in just a few seconds. And it's hard to imagine how this is possible, but that's what occurs. Therefore, what are we going to remember at the time of death? We're going to remember the activities of our whole life. So if we spend our whole life simply in material consciousness, thinking of material sense objects, that's what we're going to remember at the time of death. Or if we spend our whole life chasing after mundane knowledge, then that's what we're going to remember at the time of death and will take a suitable body in the next life according to that conception. But, if we spend our whole life thinking of Krishna, working for Krishna, serving Krishna, associating with Krishna's devotees, and ultimately develop love of Krishna, then at the time of death we think of Krishna, and then we attain our perfect spiritual body. hope you've enjoyed this edition of My Perfect Body. This is David Hughes, your host, reminding you to visit us on the web at esotericteaching.org, where you can purchase the complete Esoteric Teaching Introductory Seminar DVD and many CDs of Transcendental Music and Mantras.